to others. So there we go. Yes. Um, and I'm just going to switch that to speaker view. Well, today um, I want to do a bit of an overview on the uh, book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel is one of those well-loved uh, Old Testament books, uh, particularly uh, for those of us who've had a Sunday school education. Um, there are many great stories in the book of Daniel, uh, many great tales uh, of uh, perseverance and God's miraculous uh, work. Uh, I do want to make a suggestion today, and I think Greg might like this suggestion as well, not only because Greg and Helen chose to uh, name their firstborn Daniel, um, probably, I'm pretty sure, after uh, the prophet Daniel here, um, but I would also want to say that I think for a mathematician, the book of Daniel probably comes second to the book of Numbers uh, for a mathematician. Uh, the reason is there is a lot of mathematics in the book of Daniel. Uh, there is a, a lot of mention about uh, 70 weeks and periods of time and this event and that event coming up. I've got a thumbs up there from uh, Greg. Um, there are 12 chapters, which if you divided them equally, you would get, well, these dozen chapters, half a dozen chapters given over to sort of narrative stories and half a dozen chapters uh, given over uh, to the uh, prophecy that Daniel makes uh, as God's prophet with regards to uh, the future. Uh, there's another interesting mathematics equation. Three go into the fiery furnace, but four are seen to be in there. Uh, there is, uh, what is it, uh, 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 an addition of one third of those in the, uh, the furnace. Of course, there are, are two dreams that are declared and uh, uh, divined by Daniel, and these dreams uh, are shown to be fulfilled. Uh, there is one perseverance uh, one who perseveres throughout all of our stories, the, the prophet of Daniel. And, of course, there is none who, over, who are overcome. Um, uh, there, there is, God is, let me re-say that, God is not uh, overcome by any of the wiles of, of rulers and leaders of that day. There are zero occasions when God is defeated by the human rulers and their workings. So like I said, uh, next to uh, the book of Numbers, uh, Daniel is probably one of those books uh, that appeals uh, to the mathematician. Um, but I want to talk a bit more about Daniel than just uh, in that context of mathematics. Uh, I want to talk about uh, three things that we see both in the life of Daniel and in his ministry in this book. Uh, the first of those is what we heard in our reading from Romans uh, chapter 5. It's that concept of perseverance. Uh, the longer that I've been a Christian, uh, the more that this concept of perseverance has been something that has become dear to me. And I think for many of you as well, uh, I'm sure, the idea that God's people would continue to carry on, not just start a good race, but run the good race and run it to completion and run it to its end. And what we see in Daniel is God's wonderful account uh, through uh, his people of them persevering. There's the example of the early days of perseverance that I think probably sets up Daniel's character for us. Remember in that opening chapter, uh, uh, Daniel and his um, colleagues are asked to, to eat of the food of the court. And instead, they respond with the idea of taking on a, a diet of vegetables and and refraining from those things that are offered uh, to idols. And then early days of perseverance, God honours. And God honours it so that when dangers come along their path, they are able to be delivered from that. They trust God. And I think that's the key to perseverance, isn't it? That in the midst of difficult circumstances and trials, that perseverance is found to be secure. It is found to be uh, something that uh, is carried on and continues on. And this is where the, where the story of, of Daniel and, and his colleagues and his friends within the first couple of chapters of the, the book uh, are really key and uh, a great comfort uh, to us. If ever you faced opposition, whether from uh, um, an employer, friends in school, uh, from others, um, to hear the stories of, of Daniel and his friends, to know that they trusted in God and continued to do what God would have them to do uh, and to see them both not just come through it, but 
see God glorified and honoured through it is a great encouragement for us to keep persevering in that thing as well. And what we also see, don't we, in perseverance is that the things of earthly kings, that their desires, their plans, uh, their, their plotting, um, their, their attempts to kind of quash uh, God's people all come to nothing. Uh, we see two dreams of an earthly king and, and each of those, uh, the dreams signify um, that this king is not the true king. Um, there is one king who will come as that rock that smashes the idol's feet. The king who sets up an idol to himself that all must bow down to finds that he himself is bending his knee to the true and the living God. And so there's this first characteristic that we see in the, the book of Daniel, in Daniel himself and through Daniel's friends, uh, a perseverance of God's people or God's person in the midst of difficult circumstances. Now we might in turn just sort of say, well, that was a special trait of Daniel and his character. And, uh, and the circumstances that Daniel was in and God's hand upon Daniel at that time. Um, I, I'm not sure that I would face those kinds of similar circumstances. But what we do see uh, in the life of Daniel is something that all of us in our Christian lives can imitate. See, Daniel was one who was committed to prayer, not just persevering, but praying. And realising that prayer was a very foundational thing for him to be able to persevere. If you turn with me uh, to uh, Daniel chapter 6, you will see and be reminded of the idea of Daniel praying, even in the midst of um, circumstances where it could have been easy to, to not pray or to pray privately, to, to, to pray in secret. You know that the circumstances uh, of Daniel 6 and uh, when uh, Daniel is thrown into the lion's den, and it comes about by those who want to see Daniel um, be uh, extinguished, uh, to, to see him come undone uh, by this design of praying. And what happens, uh, and we pick up the story in uh, verse 6 of chapter 6, the administrators and, and satraps, they go to the king and, and they basically appeal to his pride and, and say that no one um, should pray except to the king. Issue a decree and put into writing that cannot be altered um, so that uh, no one uh, can pray to any God except to you. Now we pick up this, the story in verse 10. Because Daniel, when he hears this decree, what does he do? When he learns that it's been published, he takes himself to the upstairs room when the windows are open towards Jerusalem. And three times a day, he goes down on his knees and he prays, giving thanks to God, just as he'd done before. See, for Daniel, prayer was a, a, a critical part of his Christian, of his, his service, his following God. And uh, for us as well, if we want to persevere, being able to talk to God, uh, to commit ourselves to God, to commit our circumstances to God is a key part for us to persevere. If we were to continue that on into uh, chapter 9, we see a, a long and uh, uh, prayer that Daniel makes uh, during the first year of Darius, uh, of Xerxes. Um, one of the, Mer, um, the Medes um, who follow on from the, the kingdom of Babylon and, and take over. And in this prayer, we find Daniel acknowledging God's work in this world. He starts his prayer with these words, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We've been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophet, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, 
our ancestors and to all the people of the land. It's amazing that this prayer comes at a very late stage in, in Daniel's life when Daniel has been a faithful one in the midst of um, the exile of the nation of Israel, yet still he acknowledges his own personal um, uh, need before God to be made right before God. He goes on to say, Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, and in all the countries which you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. Well, Daniel picks up, doesn't he, um, the theme uh, that we've been exploring um, uh, in the Old Testament, that God's people have not always kept his commands, even though you could look upon Daniel's life and say, uh, that he is one who has been uh, faithful. Yet, as he goes on in verse 15, he acknowledges that it is God who brought the people out of Egypt. We have sinned, but he is the one who has done uh, good to his people. And so, uh, Daniel's prayer in verse uh, 17 finishes with these words. Now, our God, Hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favour on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Now, there's much that we can learn, and we will look at this prayer much more in depth as we uh, make our way through Daniel. But don't we see clearly here that prayer was a big part for Daniel being able to persevere, and a prayer that saw himself rightly before God and saw God rightly as who he is. So as I said, three things. There is perseverance on display um, in the book of Daniel. Uh, we can understand the book of Daniel um, in the context of the perseverance of his people. Underlying that perseverance is prayer, a prayer that acknowledges I am who I am and you, God, are who you are. And an acknowledgement also that God in his love and his kindness and his mercy is someone that we can call upon even when before this God we have no righteousness of our own. Now, Daniel has great stories, but it is also a book of prophecy. And as I mentioned, the second half of the book is given over to Daniel's um, uh, uh, recordings of what will happen uh, to God's people in those ends of days. And there's, again, time uh, that we're going to spend on that as we make our way through this series. Now, I'd like to um, just spend uh, some final moments um, looking at the uh, um, end of Daniel's book in chapter 12. I mean, it's not just because uh, the verses of chapter 12 open up with the words, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. Uh, this is, of course, not concerning me, but uh, uh, the prince, uh, the archangel Michael. But for how Dave, um, uh, Daniel um, concludes uh, this time of understanding all of these prophecies. Now, um, there's a lot of complications, uh, um, a lot of things here that we at first might not understand uh, because the context is unfamiliar to our own. But we also take um, encouragement because Daniel, on hearing all these things, in chapter 12, verse 8, says this, I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will be the outcome of all this? To which he replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. 
from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that calls desolation is set up, there will be 1290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1335 days. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest. And then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. As ones uh, who know the living Lord Jesus and have received the gift of salvation through him, uh, these words uh, encourage us. We might not be able to understand all of God's plans for the end of this world. We may find it difficult to interpret and understand all of these prophetic utterings uh, here in Daniel. But what we can know is this, that blessed are those whose trust is in God. For those who know who God is, for those who know that his work is not thwarted by human hands, to know that the God who has made this universe and created this world, that we might have a relationship with him, will one day bring us to that heavenly city, that holy place where he will be our God and we will be his people. And so these words give us encouragement in the midst of, of difficult circumstances, don't they? Go your way till the end. Persevere and carry on acknowledging God and giving him due praise. Be in prayer about circumstances and situations. Rest and put your trust in him. But know this, that at the end of all this, the God who has shown his salvation to us in Christ will bring all things to bend under his knee. These things are encourage us, don't they? That whatever might happen, whatever circumstances and things may be taking place in our world, God is in control. So I hope uh, this overview of Daniel has whet your appetite as we make our way through these stories. I encourage you um, over um, the next few weeks just to take up the book of Daniel and read it for yourselves. Uh, to prepare your hearts and look at some of the, the characters and some of the, the words that are uttered there. And uh, let's be encouraged to both persevere, to be in prayer, and to know that God has, uh, what God has said will happen to our world and to his people will indeed uh, happen. And that God has a glorious inheritance uh, waiting uh, for his saints.